The third chapter of the Westminster Confession begins with these words, God from all eternity did by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will freely and immutably, that is, without possibility of changing it, God did freely and immutably ordain whatsoever comes to pass, semicolon. Let me take a breath there uh, at the point of the semicolon. God from all eternity, according to his own holy and wise counsel, did freely and immutably ordain or foreordain whatsoever comes to pass. And I paused at that point in the seminary classroom and I said to my students, how many of you believe that statement? I have to understand this was a Presbyterian seminary, so these fellows were pretty well steeped in the Augustinian tradition, and uh, I got like a 70% vote there that uh, that large number believed it. And I said, okay, how many of you don't believe that statement? And 30 or so hands went in the air, and I said, fine. Now, let me ask another question. I said, without fear of recriminations, uh, nobody's going to jump all over you. We just would like to know. Feel free to state your position. How many of you would call yourselves atheists? And nobody put their hand up. And uh, I went into my Lieutenant Columbo routine. There's just one thing here I can't understand. <laughs> I said, and, I, and I looked at those 30 who had raised their hand, and I said, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? I said, I can't figure out why those of you who raised your hand saying you did not believe this statement didn't raise your hand when I asked if you were atheists. And they looked at me with a mixture of puzzlement, but the same kind of looks I'm seeing in your eyes here <laughs> today. <laughs> And I was saying, because if you don't believe this statement, you understand that fundamentally, bottom line, you're an atheist. And that was an, about the most outrageous thing they ever heard in their lives. And I said, well, let's, let's uh, understand that this statement that I've just read, that God has foreordained whatsoever comes to pass, is not a statement that is unique to Calvinism or to Presbyterianism. It doesn't distinguish the Reformed tradition from other traditions. It doesn't even distinguish Christians from Jews or from Muslims. This statement here distinguishes theists from atheists. And they were still puzzled as I continued this uh, harangue. And uh, I said, don't you see that if there's anything that happens in this world outside the foreordination of God, that if there's no sense in which God is ordaining whatsoever comes to pass, then at whatever point something happens outside the foreordination of God, it is therefore happening outside of the sovereignty of God. 